We're going to talk about section 1.2, and the big idea here is we want to solve linear systems, and we're going to use some shortcuts in, no in notation to make this easier to do. So uh, what we're going to do here is I'm going to first talk about some of our goals, and then I'm going to talk about the operations we can use to solve a linear system. So by the end of this, you should be able to use row reduction uh, so that each time you take a step using row reduction, you will eliminate one variable from your systems of equations. You should be able to take a linear system and write it as an augmented matrix. And you should be able to then turn it into uh, row echelon form. And you should be able to look at the system and recognize whether or not the matrix is in row echelon form. And once it's in row X, row echelon form, you should be able to interpret it and uh, tell us what the meaning is from the resulting system and how it relates to the original system of equations. Okay, so let's look at an example. Suppose we've got uh, this equation here, x plus 4, or I should say system of equations, x plus y equals minus 2 and 2x minus 3y equals 11. We want to find all values of x and y that satisfy both equations. Um, now before we do this, I'm just going to um, uh, talk about some nomenclature so we know the terms we're using. First of all, this first equation here, we're going to call that row 1, and we're going to denote that as R1. This second equation here, we are going to denote that as row 2 or R2. So when I talk about row operations, when I refer to R1, I'm going to take the, whatever the current uh, first equation is, and when I talk about row 2, that's basically what's going on with the current version of the second equation. So let's see. One thing I could do here is I could just solve for one variable and then plug it into the second, and that works fine for a 2 by 2, but when we go to a bigger system of equation, that rapidly breaks down. So we're going to do a different way here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to ask, can I multiply this first equation by something so that if I were to add the results together, the x's would disappear. So let's see, so if I multiply by some a, I'm going to multiply both sides by a, I'm going to have ax plus ay is minus 2a. I'm going to leave my 2x minus 3y equals 11. If I add these up, I'm just going to focus on these first things here. I'm going to have 2x plus ax and my goal is I want those to be 0. And if I do that, so let's see, 2x equals minus ax. And I want this to always be true. So let's ignore the situation when x equals 0. That will take place. That will be true if a is minus 2. So what are we, we going to do? Let's go back up to here. I'm going to take minus 2 times row 1. I'm going to add that to row 2. So minus 2 times row 1, that's going to be minus 2x minus 2y equals 4. So I basically just let a equals minus 2 and multiply through. I'm going to leave row 2 alone. And 2x minus 3y equals 11. And now I'm going to add those things together. Now notice that's going to be 0 by design. This is going to be minus 5y, so minus 2y, minus 3y. 4 plus 11 is 15. So my y is minus 3. And what's nice about that is I can now go back up to my first equation, because I know that x plus y is minus 2 from the original first equation. I can plug in y equals minus 3, add 3 to both sides, and I get x equals 1. So my solution is x equals 1 and y equals minus 3. Okay. All right. Now, one thing to notice here is that I know in this first column everything's going to be multiplied by x, and I know in this column everything's multiplied by y, and I know in this column everything's just a number by itself. So if I look at this, I know there's going to be y's here. I know that in the end here I'm just going to be focused on these x's. I don't necessarily need to keep track of the x's and y's as long as I know in advance 
uh, what columns are what and how I'm keeping track of things. So I'm going to look at another way to express this. And the idea is this. This is shorthand notation. So I'm going to put this in what's called the augmented matrix. So if I look at x plus y equals minus 2, I have 1 times x plus 1 times y is negative 2. This equation, I have, oops, that was bad. It makes it look like a negative. That's not a negative. So here, I've got 2 times x minus 3 times y is 11. And now I know everything in this column is being multiplied by x. That's 1 times x. That's 2 times x. Everything in this column is times y. So that's 1 times y. That's minus 3 times y. So that's keeping track of that. So this row right here is saying 2x minus 3y equals 11. And I basically just have a nice way to keep track of that. And now notice when I do my operations, so let's see, I'm going to leave the first row alone. Because I'm not going to change that equation. But I want to make this so that when I'm done, I want to get a 0 there. Okay, so I know that I'm going to take a times row 1 and add row 2. So what does that mean? I'm going to have a times 1 plus 2 is 0. So that means that a equals minus 2. So let's see. So a is minus 2. So I'm going to have 2 times 1 minus 3. Oh, that's too much to keep track of. 2 times 1 minus 3. Oops, sorry, this should be minus 2, so I'm already losing track. This is going to be a minus 5. And now in this, on the right-hand side, I'm going to have minus 2 times minus 2. That comes from here. Plus 11. It's going to be 15. And now the way I interpret this row is it says what? Minus 5y equals 15, because I know everything in this column is a y. So that means y is minus 3. And now I can use this row, because this row tells me that x plus y is minus 2, because there's a 1 and a 1 and a minus 2. So x minus 3 equals minus 2. So x equals 1. I get the same answer. Okay. So by using this thing here, this is called the augmented matrix. First row is the first equation, second row is the second equation. If there's more equations, it would be the third, fourth rows as you have more equations. These are the coefficients on the left-hand side, and these are the constants on the right-hand side. And we put that in just as a placeholder to let you know where things are in this matrix. Okay.